Welcome back to the last section of this mini-series. Understand that if you haven't already, make sure you check out An Unquiet Mind. An Unquiet Mind is the basis for this book because it gave me five lessons to understand about bipolar disorder. Again, this is coming from a clinician and a patient who also has bipolar disorder. She also created, co-authored a manic depressive illness textbook, an actual medical textbook. So if someone who has gone through rigorous amounts of training and studying and articles and all this good stuff has bipolar disorder, as a patient, as a clinician, it's also her role to understand, again, empathize with what can or what will not work for her patients as well. In this section, although we're going to be talking about maintenance, maintenance is key to getting the best out of your life if you have bipolar disorder, manic depression, or boulder. Boulder is, again, a spectrum, and it's very, very intense, it's profound, but it doesn't have to be pervasive if you put in the right measures to prevent manic or depressed episodes. Now understand that there are specifiers when it comes to manic depression, but it's also your job if you have it, even though it's not your fault that you have it because it's primarily genetic. You do need to hold yourself accountable to ensure that you can get the best out of your life because no one's going to do it for you. Now, unless you have a lot of comorbid diagnoses, it can intensify instability. You still have to hold yourself accountable, which is good because it teaches you a lot about self-discipline. Getting the most and maintaining stability is don't get off your meds. Unless the caveat is that you've had some serious side effects, and I mean serious meaning life-threatening, do not get off your meds. There was a video that I saw from Lizzie's answers, which is ridiculous that she got off her meds because she felt like she didn't need it. Guys, I said this before, it's okay for you to change therapists and it's okay for you to want to change your meds or reduce your meds if you're very well educated and you're tracking your moods and you're altering your lifestyle for the better, but do not get off your meds because this YouTuber says, I'm going off my meds because this is going to be good for my life. Most of the time when I see these YouTubers getting off their meds or they don't want to take their meds, it's because they're either in a manic episode and they feel like they're on top of the world or they're just very stubborn and they think that they don't need meds. I assure you, most of the YouTubers on here who are unmedicated or want to go off their meds are most likely going into a manic state. If you have bipolar disorder, whether it's one, two, or cyclothymia, you most likely need to be medicated to, unless you are in a life-threatening situation. Don't get off your meds. If you feel good, it's because the meds are working. And for the love of God, if you are trying to get the best out of your life, don't do dumb shit. If you are known for doing dumb shit like drinking and doing drugs because you had a very bad coping skill to manage the mania or the depression, don't do dumb shit. The mania is nothing more than a short high. Most bipolar patients that I've encountered or people who have reached out to me because they're diagnosed bipolar and they have coexisting problems or disorders, most of the time they have bad coping skills. Get into your right psychotherapy. Probably get into a 12-step program. Go to detox. It is not your fault that you have bipolar disorder, but if that's the primary diagnosis and you so happen to have a cocaine use disorder or an alcohol use disorder, which I had, I'm still working on it. I haven't drank as I did before. As a matter of fact, I haven't drank much at all. I think I maybe had two beers a couple of weeks ago, but that was given in the sense that I, it was a beer that I couldn't get in Texas. And even then I was off of alcohol for about a month and a half. And I will tell you, when I had those two beers, I felt like I drank a freaking barrel of beer. It was the most horrendous mistake I ever made. I don't even have the craving for alcohol anymore because of the sensation of getting the headache the next morning. I did not like that. As, as a matter of fact, I've never felt more hungover, nauseated in my life. But that is my fault for thinking that I can go back to what I do. But again, I got back on my, I never stopped my medication, but I got back on the routine that had been helping me, that's made me feel that I performed at optimal level, and I'm not looking back, I'm moving forward. 
Again, guys, I hope you like this little mini series of The Unquiet Mind. It's a really good read. I don't really promote the cadence in which Dr. K. Redfield Jameson was writing, but it's a really good contextual read if you're trying to get lessons out of what not to do and how stubbornness when you are trying to say that you're not bipolar or and when I say not bipolar I mean that you're not with a bipolar disorder if you have bipolar disorder understanding that bipolar disorder does not define you it just explains something that you have it's coexisting an unquiet mind I have to say it, it is a four out of five read for me just because the writing was off. Again, you don't have to take my word for it, but it's a very good, entertaining, contextual read that's going to allow you to get what you should and should not do when it comes to managing your mental madness, as I like to call. If you like this middle, mini series, give it a thumbs up. You know where to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on TikTok, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Tumblr. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, especially if you are undiagnosed bipolar or maybe, which is actually very difficult if you're undiagnosed or you are on the brink of having it or not. Also, if you're newly diagnosed, if you have any questions, or is there anything I can help you or guide you, I would love to do so. Until next time, guys, stay tuned. Take care.